So based on a viewer request and the results of a poll from my community page, I'm going to make an attempt at creating tips and tricks videos. Now, big disclaimer here, most of these tips and tricks are not mine. So the purpose of these videos is not to make me sound like some genius or super clever, but rather to take these tips and tricks that I'm finding out on Twitter and other resources and boil them down, uh, distill them down into a short, easily digestible video for you and your game design journey. If that sounds good, let's get started. Tip number one, did you know you can do vertex snapping in Unity? I didn't. In the scene view, while using the transform tool, hold V on the keyboard and then mouse over a vertex of the selected object. If you then click and drag, the object will snap to nearby vertices on other objects. Pretty sweet and pretty darn useful. All right, here's what I knew about, but I always forget to use. How often are you trying to debug a chunk of code with debug.log? I know it's not very sophisticated, but we all do it. And you see messages in the console, but by the time you pause the game, seven other things have changed and it's hard to know exactly what the issue was. So it turns out there's a fix for that. Using the command debug.break, you can pause the editor. And yeah, it's that simple. You can see this in action with my simple countdown. The code will pause the editor when the countdown reaches four. If I unpause the editor, the countdown will continue to run as normal. Tip number three. We've all been there. You found an awesome sound effect or maybe an image heavy asset on the asset store. Thrown down your credit card, push the buy button, and you know it's going to be awesome. And it is until the next time you try to open up Unity or you go into play mode. And it's slow, really slow. What happened? So here's the deal. Big bulky projects open slowly and even worse, each time you push play, it's slow to get going. This slows down your development and is just plain frustrating. So what's the solution? The solution is to move that asset out of the project. Now, wait a minute, you don't have to get rid of the asset. You just need to move it to a different location. You can then browse the files outside of Unity and import only the files that your project needs. This keeps your project small and running quickly. Animation curves are awesome and I suspect underused. I love them so much that I even did a video on them a few weeks back and not very many people watched it. But despite that, and despite the lack of popularity, I thought I'd talk about them again. This tip is all about using animation curves to define a random distribution. It takes a bit of mental gymnastics to understand, and it's definitely the most complicated tip in this video. With animation curves, you can define all kinds of custom distributions to fit the needs of your game. Got a loot table in your game? A few procedurally generated monsters with random abilities? Or maybe you just don't want a random number to be purely random. Either way, animation curves are here to the rescue. The simplest implementation of this is defining an animation curve that can be edited in the inspector and then feeding that curve into a function. The function then evaluates the curve at a random value between zero and one. The result is a weighted distribution depending on how you define the curve. So let's take a look at a couple different examples. On an animation curve, the input is on the horizontal and the output is on the vertical. The first example curve is just a horizontal line. In this case, the only possible output is one, so the distribution isn't random at all, but rather is constant. The second example is a linear curve. Since all vertical values are possible from zero to one, then the result here is a regular random distribution, and it's no different than if you just use random.range. The final curve is a bit messier. You can see that the first half is linear, such that all values are possible. But then on the right, you can see that lots of possible input values will result in either 0.2 or 0.8, which means those two values are most likely to show up. These curves use the same code as I showed earlier to generate the distribution, but they're attached to another chunk of code I wrote to help visualize the results. If I push play, flattened cubes will drop and their position on the Z axis is directly related to the random distribution. If I let it play for a little bit, the cubes will pile up and you can see the results of the given animation curves. This last one is less a tip or trick and more a handy resource. It's a Unity cheat sheet. It's probably best for beginners, but I'd be willing to bet there's something in there for more advanced users as well. The cheat sheet has information on the execution order of common events, game object manipulations, vectors, time variables, physics events, coroutines, input commands, and finally, some very useful hotkeys. Check the description below for a link to the cheat sheet. So there you go, there's my first tips and tricks video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Either way, I'd really appreciate some feedback in the comments below about this new video format. If you have a tip or trick that you'd like to see on a future video, put it in a comment. I'll do my best to take a look at it and add it to a future video. Otherwise, until next time, happy game designing.